hello, hello. <laughs> Got a bit of a bizarre setup here. I was gifted these wind chimes from one of you on my throne. So I thought I'd make a little hangout video with it. And in the background there, we've got uh, a canvas print painting with Mod, mod Pod over it. And I got it from Facebook Marketplace for $15. So <laughs> if for some reason the person who <laughs> sold it to me watches this video, hey, what's up? I love it. It goes well in my dining room. Anyway, this is a bit awkwardly set up because I can't get the wind chimes in shot while also being equidistant from the stereo microphones. So they'll probably be a little more audible on the left side. Um, I also was gifted another box of this, the Ticino French Roast, which I made a video with about a year ago and I talked about how I like, it's a caffeine-free sort of coffee alternative. And I find that it's very cozy and relaxing and gives me a sort of, you know, coffee-like beverage that I can drink late at night that won't keep me up because it doesn't have any caffeine and it's still November so I wouldn't say that pumpkin spice season is over yet but I did get some uh, peppermint mocha creamer that I'm excited to use it with <laughs> I'm already um, planning on some peppermint chocolate flavored desserts I'm going to make for next month. Even though I still have some pumpkin spice flavored things that I want to make this month. <laughs> and, speaking of baking, I was also gifted this uh, KitchenAid food processor. It's red, of course, so it fits in with the rest of my kitchen. And I'm going to use this to make falafel and also use a food processor when I'm making um, certain pastries, like when I make my scones, except for the videos that I made. I use uh, just softened butter and crumbled it into the flour with my hands. These are so gently tinkly, such a satisfying little sound. I'm not really sure yet what I want to make as a dedicated video for these. Maybe some kind of meditation or some kind of role play, if anybody has any ideas. Love to hear it. Drop a comment. For the meantime, I did just add them to the uh, cabinet pools where I have my oatmeal and my tea, which I probably open the most often. So every time I open those cabinets, it jingles. I hope I don't get too annoyed with it. <laughs> get the other one down. Now I got two of them on each side. That's an angry car.
picture. I like the red autumn leaves. I like the yellow ground. I like the sort of mist that's between the trees. It's very serene. There's also an interesting sense of longing, I suppose. And maybe that's just me. I like paintings of sceneries. It's like looking through a window. You can imagine you're in a different place. Somewhere better, more beautiful than where you currently are. Not sure if I showed these in their full. Glory. This one has a sort of amethyst stones on it. This one has some blue stones and black at the top. in there and then jingle out of focus. It's sort of spa-like feel. Just gentle, tingling. a little bit. I've been thinking about a lot about how I was when I was younger and how I had so much more time to just daydream. I think about fantastical worlds and the characters who inhabit them. I was speaking with an artistic friend the other day about how I don't really do that anymore. And I'm not sure if it's so much that I as a person have changed. Because I wouldn't necessarily say that I'm not as creative as I used to be. I just guess there's sort of a... practicality to it. That I'm an adult with responsibilities now and <laughs> there's always something to do. And I don't really give myself the time to really sit in silence and just daydream about something. Like I used to when I was a teenager in high school and I was bored in class or whatever. <laughs> and so you can just pick up your phone and start streaming YouTube in the middle of class. I'm sure some kids do that today. <laughs> I would say it's pretty disrespectful, but... And even if I do have moments where I'm not really doing anything and I'm just trying to get my steps in and walking around in circles, um, I turn on the radio or I watch some YouTube videos and I watch those while I'm mindlessly walking in circles, getting my steps in. And I, well, I know why I did. I did it because to drown out the noises that I had no control over. And watching YouTube videos as was having a sense of control over what sounds made it into my ears. 
And so that habit has stuck with me a little bit. But even before I started doing that, I would sit in silence for too long working on something that's kind of frustrating, like when I, when I, when I had a sewing project. I would put on YouTube videos in the background, like Let's Plays, some of my favorite video games. And I would rather listen to that because if I sat there working with my hands, which is nice, but in silence, my mind would often wander to things that happened to me in the past that I wasn't particularly proud of. And so I would just ruminate over the things that have been the way that people treated me over it. And so if I had something on in the background of a let's play of somebody talking in words that I could understand, it would help drown out my thoughts and I wouldn't really think those bad things anymore. But that was a while ago and I have been going to therapy for a while. So I'd like to think that if I were to sit down again with a little sewing project and I just sat in silence doing something with my hands, creating, that I wouldn't be so... Mm, what's the word? Uh, I wouldn't succumb to the negative thoughts so easily just because I've had more training with therapy and being kinder to myself. really had the opportunity to do that. I mean, there are some things that I want to sew, like I want to take some old bed sheets and make a dress out of them. But I have been doing some other things. A lot of cleaning, some sanding. I have some mirrors that I got <laughs> from Facebook Marketplace. And they come in colors that I don't particularly like. So, been trying to sand it down and expose the natural wood tones underneath. I do like brighter colors of wood. But if it's too dark, like the really dark colors, it just reminds me of my parents' furniture and it's not really my style. <laughs> also wanting to distance myself from that and I feel like the darker stained wood goes better with more of a lavish and elegant kind of furnishings and I don't really like that. It goes well in some places, but I find that I, I veer more towards something that's more of a natural color without too much stain in it. like. The color of bamboo in furniture. It's a nice, bright, lively color. Doesn't seem too heavy or dark. Mm, but, <laughs> anyway, back to the idea of the thought of not being as creative. Even though I'm not necessarily working on writing a novel or a big fantasy epic at the moment like I used to, um, I just find myself nostalgic for it. Like, I like the idea of being creative and being in that space and thinking about wonderful epic journeys with characters that I love. But at the same time, I don't really have any long, uh, any desire, any urge to actually 
sit down and create. And I've told my therapist this and some of my friends, I feel like it's almost kind of a waste, a waste of time and energy doing something as an adult with responsibilities to devote so much time to something that has no guarantee of any ROI. That really is such an adult perspective, isn't it? And it makes me think of the little prince and to think like an adult and to forget that childhood whimsy of being able to see a snake and the elephant that it swallowed whole. <laughs> I did go on a walk the other day. It was so lovely. It was cloudy, and with all of the fall leaves on the ground, and red trees, it was... It was so nice. And even though I didn't really think about creating anything, like writing any epic stories or anything like that, I was just kind of enjoying the solitude and just how beautiful the world is. Enjoying my own company, not feeling like I have to be with somebody else to fill the time and continue talking nonstop just because I'm uncomfortable with my own thoughts. I think it's really healthy to just be able to take moments like that, just quiet moments, no music, all by yourself, thinking, and just taking in how beautiful the world is. I don't do it as often as I would like to. <laughs> Again, I don't really like going out into the sun. So, I have to wait for cloudy days. And even though I'm proud of who I am and all the work I've done to become healthier mentally, I guess I do kind of miss my teenage self and how open I was and how I could just get thoughts from the little ideas, plot points, character growth from just little things, like find inspiration in everything. And I don't know if that's just like a switch that gets turned on and can never be turned back on when you become an adult with adult responsibilities. And you can't really think in that sort of carefree, childlike wonder. I will say though, even if you are an adult and you have an adult responsibilities, if you have people in your life who allow you to have those childlike moments where you could just stare up at the sky and imagine lovely adventures and, you know, find those people and keep them in your life because... It's hard if you only have people who think practically and... How can I make money from this? Just the very adult-like thinking in The Little Prince. But at the same time, I wonder maybe if <laughs> I held on to those childlike views of the world and of my own life and what I wanted out of it for too long. 
I asked on, I think my Facebook page, a little while ago, at least a year ago. Is it harmful to tell somebody, especially a child, that they can be anything that they want to be? And I had dinner with my friend a few days ago. <sighs> and I brought up the question to her and she said, until a certain age, she doesn't, she doesn't think it's harmful. But for me, it was like being in high school, being 15 years old, and wanting so badly to be a published author. And my English teacher, who I love, she was so supportive of me and my writing. She kept telling people like, that I'm going to be a published author before I'm, I, I graduate high school. <laughs> so I felt like there was a lot of pressure that I had an image to uphold and that if I didn't get published before college that I would be a disappointment. And college came and went and I was still not a published author. But I tried so hard and that was, oh, I was holding on to it for so long. Like, I'm going to be a published author. People are going to love this story. I'm going to be a millionaire writer. <laughs> it's really naive thinking back on it. But it's also just kind of admiral, admirable. Remembering how motivated I was to try to make that dream come true. And I think she's proud of me either way, my English teacher. I can't say that for other adults in my life. <laughs> I think I talked about this in one of my other baking videos about needing to pivot in life and, you know, maybe being a public, traditionally published author just wasn't in the cards for me. And that I found quite a bit of success being a full-time voice actor. And how cool that would have been for teenager me to be like, whoa! that's what I've become. And yeah, I guess when I was younger, I didn't really think of being a voice actor as a viable uh, profession. And even when I started it, it was just for fun. It was just a hobby. But here I am. <laughs> Making an ASMR video with these wind chimes and this awesome autumnal painting. I really like it. I'm glad I found it. And even if the stories that I really wanted to tell won't reach a wide audience, at least I could play characters who go on amazing journeys and love other amazing characters and even hate wicked characters. That's really cool too. And, you know, try to find enjoyment and fulfillment in helping somebody else bring their own creation to life and bringing their character to life through just my voice. if 
I hadn't held on to the dream of being a published author for so long. If I knew I would be more successful doing voice acting, would I have put writing aside earlier? Would I already be in LA? <laughs> How different would my life be? But I am content with where I am. Always gonna strive to make things better and be happier and be healthier mentally. And being grateful for the opportunities that I have had. And the people who are in my life. The people that I choose to keep in my life. Because they enrich it. They make me want to be a better person. A better creator. Also, just the friends who've always been there for me along the way, supporting me, even quietly. And I know that they have my back. I know higher pitch sounds can be a bit grating for some people. I just love how gentle they are. It's like the sound of magic. <laughs> but anyway, thank you, whoever you are, dear viewer, who sent me these gifts. They're fantastic. And to everybody else, hope you enjoyed this little hangout. I'm going to try to do another one before the end of the month for Thanksgiving treats. So yeah, thanks for hanging out. I'll chat next time.